Okay, never mind then. Miss Eagle, take it away. So the first system that we're going to talk about is the digestive system. This is our digestive system episode, so I hope you got that. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about, and this is the first thing that should be in your Cornell notes, so on the left side, it should say function of the digestive system. The function of the digestive system is to break down or digest food into usable parts. So you want it to be broken down into its carbs, its lipids, and its proteins. All things that we can use for our bodies to fuel ourselves and to perform everyday metabolic processes. Um, and there are different types of digestion that we're going to talk about. And that we briefly spoke about right before we left for break. Um, and we're going to go into those with a little diagram. So we're going to start with the two types of digestion. Mechanical is the first type. This is where you're just ripping your food into smaller pieces. So you're not breaking it down chemically. You're not using any kind of enzymes. You're just ripping the food apart. So there are two places where this happens. In the mouth, the teeth chew your food and make it into small pieces that you can swallow. In the stomach, your muscles are going to churn, meaning that they're gonna work really, really hard to try to break food apart even more. So you can see in the picture, we're not doing anything fancy, we're just ripping the food into small pieces. That's mechanical digestion. This is mechanical digestion. All right, in chemical digestion, we're taking it to the next level. We've already got our food into small pieces, but now we're going to add on the work of enzymes to break each food particle down into its three nutrients. So you have carbohydrates, lipids or fats, and proteins. Enzymes will go in as they always do, speed up the chemical reactions to break these food pieces down into their teeny tiniest pieces. You need enzymes for this to be able to work. So we see it happening first in the mouth. There's an enzyme called amylase that breaks down starch into glucose. It'll pause a little bit in the stomach. There's a little bit of breakdown of protein, but the majority of your chemical digestion occurs in the small intestine. You have tons of different enzymes that work there. They're breaking down all the different foods that you eat. They're getting vitamins, they're getting minerals, and then all of your macronutrients, the carbs, lipids, and proteins, to be able to get that food into tiny pieces so that it can fit into your bloodstream. That's chemical digestion. All right, everyone. So now we are gonna get into the nitty gritty and we're gonna start talking about the organs of digestion. Okay, so we're gonna start talking about the structures and we are gonna begin right here at the mouth. Um, so the mouth, you're all familiar with, right? That's your lips, your teeth, your tongue, and the place where you put all the food into your body. Um, so the thing about the mouth is that it begins both mechanical with your teeth, as we talked about before, and chemical digestion with amylase. Um, and this is where food enters and begins the process of digestion the second it enters your mouth. The next organ is the esophagus. This is going to be the tube that sits in the back of your throat that travels or allows food to travel from the throat and the mouth down to the stomach. It's just a tube of muscle, so it's very simple but it needs to use this process that's called peristalsis to be able to get the food from the top to the bottom. So what peristalsis is are muscular contractions that the muscle just squeezes and squeezes and squeezes. So that feeling you have when you swallow, that's peristalsis at the top of the esophagus. And even though you can't feel it, that same thing continues all the way down. <laughs> okay. So next is your stomach. Your stomach is a big, empty, muscular sac. Its job is to hold food temporarily and to break food down a little bit more in order to get it ready for the next step, which is the small intestine. 
Um, it holds hydrochloric acid, which breaks down a lot of the food. And there's also a mucus lining inside of the stomach that protects your body from the hydrochloric acid. And if there's ever a break in that mucus, you end up getting an ulcer, which can be pretty dangerous. So the hydrochloric acid is a really strong acid that is going to help mechanically and uh, chemically digest mm -hmm. the food. That's why if you ever throw up, you feel the burning sensation. That's from the hydrochloric acid that's coming up into the mouth. So there's a ton of enzymes here too. Pepsin is the main enzyme that's in the stomach and pepsin's job is to digest protein into its little parts, amino acids. Next is the small intestine located in orange here. Um, the small intestine is where the food goes right after it exits the stomach and it's where chemical digestion is completely finished. So you have a ton of enzymes that are here. They're getting sent in by some other accessory organs like the liver and the pancreas. And so all the food that you eat is gonna be broken down completely here. So when you end up at the end of the small intestine, you have lots of carbohydrates, lots of individual lipids, and lots of individual amino acids too. So you, as you can see, it's, it's a long organ, right? It's small intestine because it's only about an inch in diameter but it's actually about 20 feet long in uh, the average adult human, which is kind of crazy. It's all packed into this bottom area, kind of like behind your belly button. That's where you're gonna be able to, you know, kind of feel your, your intestines. So since all of our food is fully broken down, finally we can get to absorption. So in the small intestine, you have lots of little projections called villi. They're like these little hairs. And surrounding each of the little hairs is blood vessels. So in order to build muscle, right? You need proteins, you need amino acids. So how does food or how do amino acids get from the intestines to the muscles? They do that by getting into the bloodstream. And so all of the nutrients, the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, they're gonna go into the bloodstream from here. Once they're in the bloodstream, they can circulate throughout the entire body. So wherever they're needed, that's where they're gonna go. So proteins and amino acids will go to the muscles, glucose will go to the brain, Lipids will go to all of your cell membranes and they'll circulate. They'll get everywhere from that point. So now for the large intestine. So we're going to start talking about the large intestine right now. The large intestine is right after all the contents that are left over from the small intestine continue to move on. They enter the large intestine. Here is where all of the water gets removed and taken out and put back into the body. So you're left with sort of a solid material, otherwise Mass. known as poop. Right. So basically the end of the large intestine, anything that's left, anything that enters the large intestine, sorry, did I say small or large? You said large. Okay. <laughs> anything at the end of the small intestine that enters the large intestine is officially waste other than water. Anything that's actually food leaves the small intestine. It goes into the blood. So whatever's left is things like fiber or other excretory products that your body doesn't need. All of that stuff is what makes a poop. So water gets absorbed here. If you have the right amount of water being absorbed, you have a nice solid mass of feces. Feces is poop. A good poop. Right. If too much water gets absorbed, you're constipated. But if not enough water gets absorbed, you end up with diarrhea. Right. Which is not good. Which is watery poop. Watery poop. <laughs> so you want the perfect amount of water to get absorbed. And so where does the water go when it leaves the large intestine? Our cells. The blood. Right. And it gets redistributed through the whole body. So at the very end of the large intestine, moves up this way, across, and down, there's a little area called the rectum. The rectum is where the feces is held. So that feeling of having to go means that there's a pretty decent amount of feces in that rectal area. For it to exit, it passes through something called the anus, which is the sphincter at the end, which opens up and allows the poop to come out. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's your whole digestive system now. You see from the very beginning, moving all the way down is the path of your food. So you have mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Those are your main digestive organs. They are essential 
for the digestive system to work. Um, but there are some other non-essential accessory organs that, well, they are essential, but accessory organs that are important to the digestive system that we're going to go over in just a second. Yep. Okay. So now let's talk about the accessory organs. The definition of an accessory organ is something that helps the digestive system, but doesn't actually have food pass through it. So there are three in total, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Each one of these will make a certain chemical or enzyme that's going to be entering the digestive system at some point. For the most part, you can kind of just assume everything's going to enter the small intestine. So the pancreas is going to make lots of enzymes. Anything and everything that you eat will have an enzyme specifically for it. Usually they're made by the pancreas. The liver is going to have basically de detox functions. Yeah, the, all of your blood passes through it to kind of filter it and extract nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure like anytime that you, that you uh, eat something, maybe with like something that's not so good in it, the liver will make sure it pulls out anything that's toxic. The liver also makes bile mm -hmm. and stores carbohydrates. Right. So bile is this weird kind of soapy fluid that's going to help you break down fat. So it makes the bile, it stores the bile in the gallbladder, and that's the only thing the gallbladder does is hold bile. And then eventually there's a little tube that goes from the gallbladder to the, the small intestine, and it's just gonna help you break down fat. So that's it. That's, so this is now, this is all of your digestive organs. This is more than enough for what you need to know for the regions. The most important thing overall to remember for digestion is that you take in food, you need to break down that food into small nutrients. Through and then chemical and mechanical digestion. Those mm -hmm. are two really important words. And then just have to get all of those nutrients into the blood. Then they go wherever they need to go. All right. All right. So that's episode one, everyone. Thank yep. you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, follow our Instagram page. And any questions that you have, make sure you type them at the bottom. And... Make sure that you're staying home, washing your hands. Don't go on the bus. I know you miss your friends, but stay home.